the Jada and Stitches show. Today we've got a half granny shell hexagon motif for you. It is based on the full granny shell hexagon tutorial we did a little while ago here on the show. So those are kind of the counts, the shells and the chains and all of the sort of things that we used in this hexagon tutorial. This is the half version of that. If you're here for a half hexagon tutorial, it's because you need it to fill in that half hexagon space that's left on some projects like rectangular blankets that use full hexagon motifs. So today is just the half hexagon. Anyway, without further ado, <laughs> let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a half granny shell hexagon together. To demonstrate the half granny shell hexagon, I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or 9 in the US, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and some acrylic yarn. If you are making half granny shell stitch hexagons, it's very likely that you need them to complete a full granny shell stitch hexagon pattern, in which case you want to make sure you're using the same hook size and the same kind of yarn that you did for the rest of your project. That said, once you've got all this together, we can get started. I'm basing today's half granny shell stitch hexagon pattern on my full granny shell stitch hexagon pattern. We'll link our tutorial for that down below in the description box if you need a refresher. Remembering that I use two chains in my corners and one chain in between my shells along the edges as I work a larger and larger hexagon. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain four. I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first chain to make a ring and I'm going to work over top of my short tail for row one. Every row begins with a chain three or a chain four. The three chains count as a double crochet. We're going to work two more double crochet into that ring and those three double crochet equal one shell. Chain two for your first corner, three more double crochet into the ring, that's your second shell, two more chains for your second corner, and three more double crochet all worked into that same ring. A hexagon is based on six shells, so a half hexagon needs to be based on three. That is the end of row one. We are not joining our rows, but we are turning. We're going to chain three to begin row two. Again, the chain three counts as a double crochet. We're going to turn our work, and into that same stitch that we chained out of, we're going to work two more double crochet. And I want you to consider this as like a half of a corner. So where you would normally have a shell, chain two shell, we're just working one shell. Chain one, because this is not inside a corner, it's the outside of a corner. We arrive at the first space, it's the chain two corner space from the first row. We're going to work shell, chain two shell into it, or three double crochet, that's the first shell, two chains for the new corner, and three double crochet all into that same stitch, or I should say space in this case. Shell, chain two, shell. Chain one, the chain one creates the chain one spaces that will eventually run along the sides of our hexagon. But the next space we come to is a corner space from the previous row, so we're going to repeat what we just did. Three double crochet, Chain two, that's your new corner created. Three more double crochet into the same space before you leave. So now we have shell, chain two shell in the second corner space. Chain one, that brings us back to the other side, the very end of our row, 
and we want to repeat what we did over here. So however you start a row, you end it the same way. So into the top of that chain three that we began the previous row with, we're going to work one full shell or three double crochet. That is the first two rows of our half hexagon. If you just let it sit by itself, you might feel that the bottom ends want to curve down a little bit. Maybe it wants to look a little square. That's because it's a half a hexagon. And a full hexagon usually has the pressure of the split shell or the corner pushing itself apart, which is what gives it that eventual hexagon look. So in this case, you've got a little bit of a down push on this raw edge, or think of it like there's nothing there to keep your corner from pushing back up and creating that more hexagon looking edge. But when you join your hexagon in and amongst the rest of your full hexagons, I should say when you join the half in with the fulls, the act of joining it up will pull it into position. So don't worry too much about funny shaping. Concern yourself more with the stitch count and making sure you start and end your rows exactly the same way. For row three, we're going to chain four. So things start to change a little bit from here on out in the pattern. The first chain, three chains count as a double crochet. The fourth chain counts as a chain one space. We're going to turn our work and instead of working into the top of this stitch here, we're going to jump right over to the chain one space. And into the chain one space, we're going to work three double crochet. That's our shell and a chain one. That creates the next little spacer. We hop across to the next space. It's the chain two corner, the first corner we come from, come to. And we want to do what we always do in a corner, which is shell, chain two, shell, or three double crochet, chain two, that creates the new corner, three more double crochet into the same chain two space. So shell, chain two shell, and chain one before you leave because that creates the new chain one space and you need it to hop over top of your shells. The next space we come to is a chain one space. Chain one spaces get one shell or three double crochet. Before you leave, chain one, that hops you over top of the next shell. The next space is a corner, so we want to treat it like a corner. Shell, chain two, shell. That's a shell, chain two, shell, or three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Before you leave, chain one. That hops you over the next shell, there's still one space left to work, so we're going to work three double crochet into it because it's a chain one space. Chain one because you want to hop over top of the next shell, but there's nothing here. So we want to end the row the way we began the row, and that is with a what would be considered a double crochet. So the chain four equals a double crochet chain one. Because we're at the end of the row, we've chained one and we're going to double crochet and work that double crochet into the top of the chain three from the previous row. So your rows always start and end the same way. When you get to the end, make sure that it starts and finishes the same way. Pull out and you should see that half a hexagon shape starting to materialize. Remembering that if it curves down a little bit or it wants to look a little square on you, that's not how it's gonna look when you have it attached alongside all of your regular hexagons. Let's do a fourth row together. We're going to chain three. The chain three counts as a double crochet. And for row five, actually this is row four. So rows three is an odd row heading outwards. Row threes or odd rows start with a chain four and end with a chain one double crochet. And the even rows or row four start with a chain three and two more double crochets worked into the same place that you chained out of. So if you wanted to continue to make your hexagon bigger, you would continue to repeat rows three and rows four. So three, four, three, four, three, four. Row four 
or the even row heading outwards, if you want to keep making your hexagon bigger, starts and finishes with a shell at the very end, all worked into the top of the last stitch. Chain one, because you want to hop over top of the next shell, that brings you to a chain one space, and you work a shell into it. Every time you come up against a chain one space, you work three double crochet into it, and then chain one before you leave. The next space is a corner, so we're going to work a typical corner here. Shell, chain two, shell. There's your shell, chain two, shell, corner, chain one, two, before you leave, you're hopping over the next shell. We're into a chain one space. A chain one space gets three double crochet. If it's a chain one space, it gets one shell. If it's a chain two space, it gets two shells. It's an easy way to remember it. Don't forget to chain one, it hops you over the next shell. The next space is a chain one space, so we work one shell into it. chain one before you leave. The next space is a corner, so you want to work shell, chain two, shell into it, because it's a chain two space. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Every chain two space gets that treatment. Chain one before you leave, you can hop over top of the next space, or I should say the next shell. The next space is a chain one space, so it gets one shell, or three double crochet. Chain one before you leave, that hops you over the next shell, and then you're into a chain one space. So you want to work three double crochet into that space. Now let's stop. The row began with a shell, so it has to end with a shell. Rows need to begin and end the same way. That was a row four or an even row. The even rows or the row fours start with a chain three and two more double crochet into the same place because you want to start the row with a shell. Then it's the same chain one, skip a shell, put a shell in the next chain one space, chain one before you leave. Whenever you come to one of the corner spaces and you only have two, Shell, chain two, shell, chain one before you leave, and then it's a shell, chain one, in each of those chain one spaces. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, into the chain two corners, chain one before you leave. You're hopping over a shell. Every chain one space gets one shell. Don't forget to chain one before you leave. And always check, make sure that your row begins. If it begins with a shell, it ends with a shell. If you were going to continue, Row five would be a repeat of row three. Row six would be a repeat of row four. Row seven would be a repeat of row three. Row eight would be a repeat of row four. So you're repeating row three, row four, row three, row four. And you can repeat those two rows, remembering that a row three starts with a chain one, two, three, four, because that counts as a double crochet, chain one, turn your work, you're not starting with a shell because the previous row did. Instead, you're just jumping right over into that chain one space. Three double crochet. Chain one before you leave and so on. All the way up to here. Treat your chain two corners always the same. So those shells, or I should say those chain two corners always work out to be shell, chain two, shell, chain one before you go. All of your chain one spaces get one shell or three double crochet. And of course, chain one, that hops you over the next shell. And when you would get to the end of this row, always look back, you see that it started with a chain four, which is technically a double crochet chain one. So you know when you get over here, you'll work a shell into that last chain one space, and then you're gonna chain one and end with a double crochet in the top of that last stitch, or what was the chain three of the previous row. Then if you were gonna keep going, you would start the next row, an even row, with a shell. That row would have to finish with a shell as well. So you're just repeating row three, row four, row three, row four, no matter how large you wanna make your hexagon. 
I made a four row hexagon, full granny shell hexagon here. This is a four row half hexagon. Now you see how it wants to look a little square, the bottom's a bit bubbly, but if I pull this out, it starts to look more like a hexagon. So consider that when you're laying everything out and you end up stitching or sewing this edge together, and then you stitch and sew this side to what would be the same thing over here, and then you can tell that there would be another full hexagon down here, this will get pulled into place. It will make itself look much like a half a hexagon, not like it does when it's just sitting there with nothing to push it into position. Remember, these corners are what pushes that yarn into that hexagon shape. A quick note on changing color. If you want to change colors for your rows, you would just do it exactly the same way you would change colors in your full hexagon. So you would finish a row, let's say that's it, you'd fasten off, and then you would join your next color right here in that first stitch. So you're looking at it this way because you've turned it. And in this case, if we were increasing continually, we'd be starting with a chain four. So you'd join your yarn with a slip stitch right here, chain four, and continue the pattern. If you were joining your new color on an even row or a row four, that means you'd be joining your row down here in the chain one space that was created by the previous chain four that began this row. So you'd join your yarn with a slip stitch in the chain one space, chain three, finish the shell with two double crochets, and then chain one and continue the pattern. So it's no different than if you'd be changing colors in a regular hexagon pattern. And once again, our original granny shell hexagon pattern is linked below if you need a refresher. When you're finished with your hexagon, you just fasten off by snipping your yarn and pulling your end all the way back through your hook loop. And that's it, you're done. You can weave in your little tails and this raw edge, when you are stitching it or going over top of it when you're adding your border, chances are this is the edge that sits out and faces the outside of your blanket. Remember to treat your edges of your shells and your posts or your chain three or double crochets, whatever these are here, you treat them all the same way. So a double crochet is usually worth two single crochets or if you're working right around the stitch, you've got this stitch to work around and this stitch to work around, then this stitch and then this stitch. When you get to the center of a hexagon, it depends on the border pattern you're using, but you can either use this open space here as a stitch space, like one space or a stitch, or depending on the kind of pattern you're using, you might want to skip over it, but it does depend on the border. And there you go, a half granny shell hexagon motif, and that's designed to go along with our regular full-sized granny shell hexagon. It's really simple to just make it larger or smaller. You just want to repeat rows three and four over and over again. And don't worry about that funny bottom edge. The whole thing will get pulled up into its proper position when you stitch it into place alongside the other full-sized hexagons. We hope you enjoyed that little tutorial today, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody. Hi, everyone. This is Mom and Stitches. Thank you for watching. Here are a few other videos you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and you can also click the like button and the bell. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.